Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video with Swaggle Haas. As you guys can see, we are not in the usual comic room setup. Nope, no sir. We are actually inside my car. Because in this video, I thought it might be kind of fun to drive around town and hit up some of those garage sales to see if we can find that elusive AF-15 being sold for $20 in grandma's driveway. But sadly, that actually was not how my morning played out because before I started recording, I actually did hit up one garage sale, and after seeing that they were selling used utensils and dirty couches with no comic books or even collectibles in sight, I realized that I don't know if I really want to spend my morning doing this. Which brings me to the true topic of today's video, which is, while online hunting may not be as fun, it is certainly a hell of a lot more consistent. Because I did actually find one comic book, a $400 key comic book, at a house in my neighborhood this morning. And that house was actually mine. And it was a comic book delivered to me by my mailman because I bought it online. So in this video, let us go treasure hunting to my doorstep, to my porch, and see if we can find that comic book there, which as you guys can see, it's actually right there. There it is. Comic book treasure hunting found in the neighborhood a $400 key comic book. All right, I'm actually gonna drop the shtick for a little bit, okay? And we're just gonna talk to you guys seriously. Come on inside, guys. Come on, come on. Inside. Say hello to Doggle Haas right there. We got a $400 comic book dev. All right, well, let us get into this video here today. Actually, I'm gonna go into my Swaggle Haas setup right there. In fact, let's use some movie magic to transition over to the usual setup. All right, we're back in the normal setup. Let us get into business here today. I actually do have a $400 comic book unboxing to do with you guys. A book I think is actually kind of underrated. A character that I've made mention I think is underrated and a genre of that book that I also think is slightly underrated or maybe not underrated, maybe underappreciated. I should frame it that way. But I know what you guys are thinking. You're thinking, oh man, I thought we were going to go hunting in the neighborhood here today. Well, I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. I mean, just... Right now, there are so many opportunities to be buying online that it makes it hard to be motivated to actually get in the car, you know, spend that gas, drive around for, you know, maybe high risk, high reward. Maybe you find that AF-15, but more likely you're going to come back empty handed. And especially now that there's so many deals online, it's hard to actually get motivated to do that. So I had to make that silly little intro to prove a point to get into today's video. I mean, I know if you guys feel like I'm ripping you off here, you're like, oh man, I wanna see the treasure hunting. I'm sorry, okay, you're already here. Just stay a while, okay? Just stay a while. Take off your jacket, you're making me nervous. You know, just take it off. Relax, okay, relax. All right, let's talk about this book here today. Uh, this is a book that, uh, you know, I, I, it's a golden age book, guys. It's a golden age book. Uh, something that I have had my eye on, you know, it's one of the things I had been following on eBay as far as like a safe searches list. And it's basically for a genre of book and a genre of character that I think uh, has been kind of underrated, underappreciated by the comic book market for a little bit of time, considering, you know, some of the uh, counterpart books, I think, are extremely uh, high in value. And these ones are lagging a little bit behind. And for that reason, I think that there's actually a lot of opportunity with some of these books. So I've been following a bunch of the listings and uh, one eventually came up. And it was a it was a raw book being sold, and I can I could tell you know just from the the feeling of it. You know, you ever guys you have those listings where you're you're following them on eBay, and you get that feeling. You're like, I think that this is going to go pretty low. Like I I'm not I'm not feeling like people are watching this one, and that was certainly the case with this one. I mean, maybe no one's watching it because nobody cares about these books right now, and because uh, nobody values them. But I personally value them, and I saw this book being sold at auction a raw copy, a low grade, and ended up winning it for $371. But this right here is Superman number 13, one of the first World War II related covers of Superman. That I think is why this book is pretty special. This is the first, what I would call the first World War II cover uh, within context to the Superman title, where you can see him punching Das Boot with the iron 
cross on it. And I think the Superman World War II kind of history covers stories and all that stuff is very, very interesting um, as you, you kind of see it evolve throughout the ages. Like it felt like maybe Superman was a title that was more targeted to sort of kids at that time towards the youth, uh, you know, slightly younger demographic. And unlike, say, the Captain America books or, you know, some of the Human Torch stuff and Submariner that felt like maybe they were uh, pushing that stuff to a slightly older crowd, you know, pushing it a little further with the propaganda and with the violence and the gore and stuff. It felt like Superman was not doing that. And it took a while for Superman to actually transition over to having some of those World War II covers. That being said, I understand that the fidelity of the art that Fred Ray did, as much as I like Fred Ray, uh, is not on the level of Schomburg. So, you know, in an in a aesthetic vacuum, uh, certainly those Schomburg covers are, uh, you know, much better done, much more interesting, and probably will always be more desired and valued by the comic book market. But when you take a step back in a 30,000 foot view and you think about Superman, what they represent. You think about, you know, Superman fighting Nazis and World War II covers and stuff. You start to think, you know, maybe the market has forgotten how cool this character is. I know all you comic book dealers right now are thinking to yourself, nah, Batman's better. You know, Batman's better. Nobody cares about Superman. And hey, that's the case. I'm not saying that I'm trying to bet against the market. I'm just saying, don't sleep on James Gunn. What if James Gunn makes Superman the greatest character once again? And everybody wants those Superman covers. But this one is really cool regardless. I, I really do enjoy the Superman covers that have, you know, kind of an action pose. I like that he's punching the boat right here. Uh, a couple chips down in the corner. This one is actually a fairly low grade. Probably would grade out to be a 1.8, I would guess. Um, maybe I'll get the Golden Age bump and they'll give me a 2.0, you know. You know, even though there's these big chips here. Uh, the chips actually... Uh, I think actually kind of came off in, in delivery, which is unfortunate. But you could tell that they were hanging on by a thread. But this book is really, really interesting. Very, very cool to add it to the collection. A lot of very nice colors. And I think that there's actually a bunch of interesting World War II Superman covers that I pulled up that I thought, you know, I would share with you guys here today. Starting with this one right here, Action Comics number 40, September 10th of 1941. In my personal opinion, I consider this one of the first if not the first Superman World War II cover. Now he's punching the tank right there that again has the iron cross on it. It's kind of funny because this iron cross is not exactly the iron cross that the Nazi party used. They didn't quite want to make it so specific and so political. Maybe they were kind of drawing it in a way that was only adjacent to the iron cross. But in my opinion, I mean, clearly that's what it is in reference to. And this right here being 1941 September, uh, to me is one of the first World War II covers. Then you get into this book right here, November 10th of 1941, the first time in the Superman title. And this is the one that I just showed you guys uh, where he's punching the uh, boat right here. Of course, it would be the next month that uh, we would have Pearl Harbor, which would bring U.S. into the war, and you would get shortly after that, you know, this uh, classic Superman book right here, which is like, you know, as far as uh, Superman America propaganda covers are concerned, this is definitely a key issue and one that a lot of collectors like. And then you get to Action Comics 44, which is also, you know, coming after Pearl Harbor. And this, to me, I think is one of the best World War II covers you get with Superman. I mean, this actually has the Nazi symbol on the tank right here. Uh, there's not too many covers, you know, in the Superman genre that actually include the Nazi symbol. And I think the values of this book are representative of the market's desire for it. Uh, you know, being that, you know, it's a cool pose. It's got the, it's got him fighting, you know, the Nazi gunner right here. Uh, I love that it's, he's bending the gun, uh, really, really good blocking. And this is definitely one of the, you know, more valuable uh, of the genre of covers uh, for Superman, you know, involved in World War II. You got this book right here, of course, another one of the big keys where he's actually holding up Hitler right there. Uh, everyone focuses on this one, uh, Superman number 17. And then a few other ones that I thought were pretty interesting, Action Comics number 54, him b battling the U-52 boat right here. Uh, another one that is, you know, uh, not too often does it actually have, you know, Nazi symbols on Superman comic books. Uh, you have this one right here where he's taking out the tank. And then the last one, of course, is this one right here where the Nazi uh, gunners are looking at their periscope and Superman is swimming after them. I don't actually know if Superman just sunk this German boat. Is that the German boat or did he save people from the German boat? Either way, Superman is clearly on a mission to get these soldiers right here who are cowering in their boots after 
realizing that he is coming for them. So those are some of the interesting Superman covers and ones that I've personally been looking out for, keeping my eye on in the market. Again, I, I've made mention before, I feel like Superman, even though he's you know a very obvious character and his books are very, very valuable, uh, when you compare him to that of say Batman and some of the, the filler books for, for Batman or the you know uh, lesser keys with Batman, uh, Batman has definitely outpaced Superman by quite a lot. And I'm not here to say that Superman should be more valuable than Batman. Clearly the market uh, would rather have Batman books, but I do think that there could be a time in the future where uh, you know Superman, uh, becomes that sort of flagship superhero once again, especially if James Gunn can do him right. I mean, even Golden Age collectors are susceptible to the pop cultural aspects of, uh, you know, the collecting market and what happens with, you know, the demand side of things. So, you know, I think a lot of these Superman covers are, you know, maybe underappreciated, maybe underrated. I mean, I, I do also agree that, you know, the art, while it's nice, while it looks good, is maybe not at the same fidelity level of that of the Schomburg stuff. But, you know, I think that there is a little bit of meat on the bone, a little bit of opportunity. And I felt like picking this book up for $371, which was my total cost for this book, uh, felt like that was a really, really good deal because, you know, looking at some of the prices, I think that there is definitely some meat on the bone. And that is where I want to transition it back to hunting online versus hunting in the wild. And something that I thought was interesting to talk about, you know, I was thinking about how, how, how am I going to do my video here today. I'm going to show you guys an unboxing, but what can we really talk about? And it really is this interesting thing where you're seeing so many deals on eBay right now. Like they just slip through the cracks, especially raw books that are for keys that, you know, maybe, um, you know, end at odd times, or maybe they're not like the obvious raw books. Like if an AF15 goes on eBay, like I'm sure people have it on their watch list, they're gonna, they're gonna watch it. But there's so many keys out there. There's a lot of even golden age books that you can make really decent margins on. If you buy them at auction, and then say you send them into grading, and then you can relist them and sell them. And you can make easily the same profit margin that you could make if you were going around to those garage sales and driving around town and spending all that gas money and spending all that time and energy, and yeah, maybe you walk away with, you know, an ASM 361, you know, for, that you found for a dollar that you can sell for, you know, a hundred dollars, you know, even in this book right here, like I know that there's probably a margin of, I don't know, $200 that I could probably get with it if I get it graded and end up selling it. So it's really interesting to see that. And there's a lot of opportunity, uh, you know, to hunt online with some of these deals, uh, even though it's certainly not as fun as going around town to the garage sale stuff. I mean, don't get me wrong, people absolutely crush it, you know, hunting out there with the garage sales, but it takes a lot of effort. It takes a certain type of mindset and persistence uh, to do that stuff. And you probably have to be a little more open-minded uh, to other types of collectibles, not just comic books, you know, when you're out there hunting. I mean, I, I personally just can't get too excited about finding toys in the wild. I mean, no disrespect to you toy collectors, but you know, when I go out hoping to find comic books, I'm actually hoping to find comic books. And right now it's hard to pass up those online deals because you can find comic books like this one right here, Superman number 13. Anyways, that's all I got for this video. That was my $400 comic book find on my own porch delivered by my own mailman because I bought it online. I don't know. What do you guys think about that? What do you guys think about, you know, the certain hunting right now that, that's going on in the wild? I feel like all the hunting is online. I feel like books like Superman, World War II covers are kind of underrated and there's a lot of meat on the bone for them. Anyways, that's all I got for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that one. Let me know what you guys think about hunting right now. Of course, if you can like, comment, subscribe, I appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next video.